Welcome to a, a very short Rock Coder game tutorial where we're going to put together the basics of a fun little game. We'll start by creating a new project. Now this game is going to be about landing a spaceship on the surface of a planet. So we're going to need to add a costume of a spaceship. We'll use the sprite we've already got by default. We'll use a scratch cut sprite. Go into costumes and we will choose a costume and the costume I'm looking for is going to, I'm going to put the word rocket in there because I want the rocket ship. And specifically, I want rocket ship B. I only want one frame of the rocket ship. And there it is. I can get rid of costume one and I can get rid of costume two. Now I want this spaceship to be facing to the right by default. So to do that, I'm going to Make sure I've got the select icon. I'm going to click the mouse and drag it to make sure I've selected all of the rocket. The reason I'm doing that is because this sprite is made up of a rocket. It's made up of two halves and I want to select both halves at the same time. So I'm going to drag a box around all of it. Now when I've got that box dragged, I can use this turning icon to gently move it left or right. But I, I don't want to move it to an angle, I want to move it exactly so it's flat on the side. So I'm going to press the shift key and when you've got the shift key held while you're turning it, you'll see that it moves to specific angles. So I want it to there. So I've now got a rocket ship facing to the right. So let's go back into the code. As is usual with a Scratch project, we'll start with when the green flag is pressed and we will show just to make sure we can see the sprite and it's too big there I don't want him to be that size I want him to be smaller I think maybe size of 30 percent so let's see see if that's around the right size I'll do that just by hitting the green flag that's a bit too small I'll try 40. that looks good for this game okay and oh, I want to go back into the costume because one thing I didn't do was make sure the sprite is positioned against the center point as I want it to be. So again, I'm going to select all of it and I want the center point. The spaceship is going to be dropping things as it flies and I want the center point to be where they drop from, which will be just from underneath him there. So let's drag him over and just rest that on the center point. So that is now, if, if I place him at zero, zero, that is where the center will be. Okay. Back into the code. We're showing him, we've set his size. We want to make him fly to the right hand side of the screen. So let's put a forever in there. Forever. And we will move him 20 steps at a time. And that should fly him straight across the screen to the right. Let's try it. It does, but it starts wherever the sprite was. I want it to start in the top left corner. So I'm going to have to position him correctly. So I'm going to make sure he starts at minus 200, which will be the left hand side, and 150, which will be towards the top. So let's try that. There he goes, flying across the top of the screen. When he gets to the right hand side of the screen, I want him to turn around drop down and fly back again, which I can do easily enough if I say, I'm going to add if, if his x position, which is in the motion block, if his x position is 200, which is the right hand side of the screen, then I want him to turn around, so turn by 180 degrees, which will turn him right around and to move down the screen. So to do that, I will just change his Y coordinate by minus 20. So now when he reaches the right hand side of the screen, he'll turn around, drop down and fly to the left. So let's see how that looks. It's great, works perfectly, way too fast. I can't control him at that speed, so I'm going to add a pause. I'm going to wait for a second after each movement. If I do that, another interesting point, he started 
facing the wrong direction. So when I set him up, I need to make sure that he's facing to the right, which is 90 degrees. So now he starts in the correct place, he's facing the correct direction, he's moving too slowly. I don't want one second between each move. Let's try it with 0.3. That's a better speed. But now notice that when he's turned round, it's upside down. I don't want him to turn upside down. So we're going to use the rotation style at the beginning. I'm setting the position, I'm setting the direction, I'm setting the size, and I'm going to set the rotation style, which currently is all around. I'm going to set it to left right so that he will just flip over. Instead of rotating around, he will just flip over to the left or to the right. So let's try this. Flies across the screen at a nice speed. And he gets to the right hand side and he flips over and he drops down. I think one other thing I'm going to do, I think I'm going to remove these little smoke clouds. They don't really work for this game. Let's go into costumes. Notice if I select the smoke sprite, it's selected all of this area. That's a group of sprites. So I'm going to press the ungroup button. And now that I've done that, I click over here and then I'll click, I'll click just the cloud and I'll press the, the delete icon and then I'm going to select just this one. I'm going to delete that too. And now I've got rid of the smoke clouds that I didn't really want in this game. So now we've got him moving to the right, dropping, moving to the left. But when he reaches the left hand side of the screen, I want him to drop down and move back towards the right. So that code is going to be very similar to this. So I'll just duplicate this block take the weight off the bottom and I'll say if x position equals a minus 200 the left hand side of the screen and I'll put that just before the weight. So now you can see flies across to the right he'll drop down fly to the left drop down fly to the right. I could have made this code slightly nicer because he's doing the exact same thing whether he's on the left or the right of the screen. So instead of these two blocks I could have used the OR. I could have simply said if the exposition is 200 or the exposition is minus 200, then do that little block of code. Then put that back in there and it will do the same whichever way I'm facing. So let's have a look at that. While I'm testing this, I think I'll have the weight as just 0.1, just so he moves a bit faster for testing. And he's working fine, he's moving across, he's dropping, he's moving back, he's dropping. I want him to do that all the way until he reaches the bottom of the screen. If he reaches the bottom of the screen, then well done, we're finished. So I'm going to add, if the Y position, how high he is on the screen, if that is minus 170, then he's reached the bottom of the screen. So let's check his Y position. If it's 170, he's reached the bottom. What we're going to do is we're going to say hooray for two seconds because we've landed. And then we're going to stop everything to the control block. Stop all. And I'll put that in here before he turns. So when he reaches the edge of the screen, then if he's on the bottom level, he doesn't need to drop and turn, the game is over. And again, because this is testing, I'm going to reduce the weight to zero so that he goes very fast. And he's flying down the screen. Let's see if the game finishes when he reaches the bottom. Not a very exciting game yet, but it'll get there. No, it does not end when he reaches the bottom. Let's see why not. If y position equals 170, well, what is the y position? I would have thought it would have been 100 minus, minus 170, the bottom of the screen, not the top of the screen. Check that. See how it's easy to make these silly little mistakes. You should concentrate all the time while coding. It's a lesson to myself, though. Reaches the bottom of the screen, 
gets to the end. Hooray! We've won the game. What an exciting game that was. But there are going to be things on the screen that stop us getting to the floor. This is where the game gets exciting. I'm going to make a custom block called Create Terrain. And this is going to put things on the surface of the planet, a set of hills that we have to flatten. Now I'm going to draw these hills using the pen. It's not going to be a sprite, I'm going to do it using the pen. So we need to add the pen extension, which adds all of these new blocks. When we create the terrain, the first thing we'll do is we'll clear the screen, get rid of any old terrain. And then we need to, what I'm going to do is draw vertical lines to represent little hills. So we'll set the pen size to 18. And we'll set the x coordinate where we want the first hill to minus 200, the left hand side of the screen. Like so. And then we will set the y coordinate to the bottom of the screen. No, nope, we'll set the pen color. That's a good idea. So here we have set pen color. Actually, that's not a bad color of green. I might make it a little bit darker for this. So I'll just change the brightness down slightly. And I'm happy with that. So now I'll set the Y to the bottom of the screen, which is minus 180. I'm not going to forget the minus this time. Put the pen down. Then I'm going to move the pen upwards by a random amount. So change Y. I'm going to change it by a random amount, which is an operator. A random amount between 20 and 240. So let's have a look at that. 20 to 240. And then I'm going to lift the pen back up again. And obviously I'll have to actually call this routine to make it do something. So when I press the green flag, the first thing I'll do is draw the terrain. So let's have a look at that. Press the green flag and there's a little hill. Press it again, different size each time. But I want more than one hill. I want hills all the way across the screen. So to do that, we're going to loop. We're going to repeat until I've started at minus 200, so I want to do it all the way across to plus 200. So we're going to repeat until the x coordinate is bigger than 200. And I'll put this around my code there that draws a line from the bottom upwards. But after it's drawn the first line, I'm going to simply change the x coordinate so it moves across the screen to the right slightly before it does the next line. So now if I run this, I'm getting a variety. See how <laughs> the rocket moves with the sprite there. I'm getting a variety of hills, but I want them to appear straight away. Also, I don't want to see a rocket at the top of them. To stop the rocket appearing at the top of them, I'm going to hide the sprite at the beginning of terrain, and I'm going to change the order of this code slightly. No, not that's perfect. It's going to hide the sprite, show the terrain, and then show the sprite. So if I run that, you see it draw the terrain, and then the rocket appears. Now I'm going to make one quick little change, which will make it draw the train instantly. I'm going to right click on this block, hit edit, and I'm going to run without screen refresh. Simply doing that, and it's drawing the train straight away now, which is great. So how is the rocket ship going to get past these hills? He's going to drop heavy weights out, which are going to squash the hills. You can drop one weight out at a time. So how are we going to do that? 
I'm going to make another sprite. The painter sprite. Now, I don't actually need a costume for this sprite at all because I'm just using the pen. I'm going to call the sprite Heavyweight. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to give the rocket ship a better name than Sprite what I'm going to call it. Rocket ship. So back into the heavyweight Sprite. What I'm going to do here is I, I want it to uh, drop a weight when I press a space bar. So let's go into the code and let's make an event when the space key is pressed. Now we're not going to show a Sprite at all, so we're going to make sure this is hidden. Gonna hide. And we want this to fall out of the rocket ship. So the first thing we'll need to do is go to the rocket ship. And as I mentioned before, if you look at the costume of the rocket ship, this will go to the center point there. So things are gonna drop out of the ship from that point, which is perfect. So back to the heavy weight sprite. And we're going to, we've, we're positioned it at the rocket ship. We're going to drop it down to the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to put a repeat loop in here. Repeat until we've reached the bottom of the screen. So that'll be until the Y position is less than, let's do it really low on the screen, minus, we'll call it minus 176. That's very low on the screen. And it's the Y position that we're checking. So I've got to set the pen size to 20. No, sorry, I'll set the pen size to 18, the same size as the buildings. Set pen size to 18. And set the pen color to whatever color I want this heavyweight to be. I think a, a gray color, and set it to whatever color you fancy. I fancy a, a kind of a greyish. There we go. Like that can be any colour you want. So set it to grey and then put the pen down and pick the pen up. And that will draw a circle with a pen size of 18. Obviously I want it to move down the screen. So I'm going to Change the Y coordinate. I'm going to do it at the top of the loop. You change it by minus six. So now if I press the space bar, there it goes, my heavyweight drops down the screen, leaving a long line. I don't want it to leave a long line. I want it to just be a dot moving down the screen. So to fix that, I'm going to have to remove it by drawing a white dot over it each time. So what I'm going to do is I'll draw a grey dot, then it's going to move down, draw a white dot over the old one, and then another grey dot moving down the screen. So to show how this is going to work, I'm going to duplicate that code. I'm going to make the white dot a little bit bigger just to make sure it completely clears the grey off. The pen colour needs to match the background, so white. And pen down and pen up, and I'm going to put that before the block. So how this will work is if you consider the bottom here, it's going to draw a grey a gray circle and then the next frame it's going to draw a white one over it to get rid of it, move it down and draw another grey circle. So if you see this in action, press space, and it goes all the way down and leaves a grey circle at the bottom. So we need to once more, if I copy this code, after it's finished the loop it needs to draw the white circle over the bottom and end. So if I run this, I press space, down it goes, all the way clear. And it, because it's pen, it's wiping out the hill behind it because that's also drawn in pen. So I can press the space bar and I can drop a heavy weight to squash the hills. Look at that. So I think you can see where this is going now. I can only do one at a time. Which is, which is perfect for this. And I have to drop the hills. Oh, 
wash the hills before I run into them. Ooh, I would just be okay there. But I need some code that says if I run into a hill, game over. So that will be back in the rocket ship code. So back to the rocket ship sprite. And over here, as we're moving along, now we just need to see if the rocket ship is touching that colour of green. So if, and it's a sensing block, if touching, I know it has to be that exact colour of green, so again we'll use this tool here, which allows me to select the colour I want, which is that green. Exactly, so if I'm touching the green, what I want it to do is say something. So we're going to say, boom, and then we're going to stop. And I'll put that code in straight after he's moved forward. So let's have a look on a bigger screen with this running. I can press space and I can squash a, a hill. But if I'm not going to squash the tallest one, I'm going to see what happens when I run into the hill now. And if this game is too easy, we can make the spaceship move faster, or we can make the heavy weights drop slower, or we can make the hills bigger. There's plenty we can do with this game. We can add sound effects. We can make it so the plane can go faster and slower if we wanted. He just made it over that hill. I'm going to take this one out. Oh, I missed it. Oh, my heavy weight dropping skulls are not great. Oh, is he going to make it? And he's crashed. Boom. Game over. In fact, when the game's over, I think I'll also I'll hide the spaceship because he's he's gone boom. And there we have the full game. We have to try and squash all the hills before we get to the ground. If we manage to do it and we land on the ground, then we win. If we bump into a hill, then we lose. It's a very short game, very simple. Um, and you can make this, you can build on this. You, sound effects, obviously need sound effects. It could have a nice, in the background, you could have a nice drawing in the background. You could make it so the ship gets faster as it gets lower. You can make it so it's more than one level. If he lands on the first level, he goes to another level. The spaceship's a bit faster and so on, so it's more difficult. There's plenty of things you can do with this game, but this is a nice way to start it. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to the Rock Coder YouTube channel where there's lots of playthroughs of projects I've written, lots of hints and tips videos, and I'll see you again next time.